Chapter thirty five of Paul the Dauntless. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by David Leeson. Paul the Dauntless by Basil Joseph Matthews. Chapter thirty five on the Appian Way. It is the Castor and Pollux, one old sailor on the quay at Puteoli would say to another as the Alexandrian grain ship ran into the harbor. They would know her well, as the ships belonging to the fleet of provision vessels ran regularly to and from Puteoli and Alexandria, but there would be a new stir of eagerness among the loungers on the quay that would soon spread to the town, when it was noised among them that there were prisoners on board from the faraway province of Syria and Judea. As the prisoners and the centurion Julius with his other soldiers came off the ship, a group of men crowded round Paul with eager, friendly smiles. They had never seen him before, but they knew his name from friends, like Priscilla and Aquila, who had known Paul in Athens and Corinth and Ephesus, and who were now living in Rome. "'Do stay with us,' they pleaded. And Paul, whose courage and strong help on board the wrecked ship had made Julius think more of him than ever, was able to persuade the centurion to stay for a few days at Puteoli. It is likely that Julius would not need much persuading, for this was the first Roman city that he had been in for a long time, and he would be eager to hear the talk about the young Emperor Nero and his cruelties, and all the gossip of the army. He would be glad, also, to go again to the amphitheatre at Puteoli and watch the play. Meanwhile the group of Christians went off in triumph with Paul to sit with him in their homes, to hear him speak of the great things that had happened to him and to the brethren, as all the worshippers of Christ then called one another, in Achaia and Macedonia, in Asia and in the faraway cities on the edge of the Roman world, Antioch and Damascus and Jerusalem. Seven days passed like a flash, and it seemed impossible to believe that at last they must wrench themselves away from Paul. Before he started, however, they would tell him of the cruel power of Rome, of how young Nero, throned as emperor, was beginning to kill every one who stood in the way of his whims, and had even slain his own mother, Agrippina, only last year, of the gladiators, kept and trained simply to kill one another, and of the slaves brought from faraway places, from Syria and Spain, and strange slaves were beginning to come from savage islands far, far over the Alps, and beyond even Gaul, called Britain. The Britons made splendid gladiators to fight the lions. Paul turned his back upon the sea, and with his fellow travellers climbed the consular way, over the hills behind Puteoli. He felt proud to be a Roman citizen, for Roman rule, even though it was often cruel and hard, was generally just and strong. Every nerve in Paul's body tingled at the courage of Rome, the daring that had spread the rule of those few people on the hills of the Tiber right over the whole world of that day. It was just in line with his own world-embracing courage. But he wished with even a greater daring to draw all the people in that Roman Empire into the way of Christ, from the barbarians of the islands of the North Sea to the black-skinned Ethiopian of Africa, and from the mighty pillars of Heliopolis in Syria to the pillars of Hercules that guarded the western gate of the Mediterranean. His audacious thought leapt across the flaming ramparts of the world, for he dared to dream of founding an unseen kingdom of the Spirit over all the earth, not by the sword, but by heroic love. Jesus Christ throned above emperors and kings, consuls and generals. That was Paul's ambition. These thoughts must have surged like a stormy sea in the mind of the chained but conquering Paul as he strode along the way. One hundred and seventy miles of that road lay between himself and the great city. When they had trudged on for nineteen miles, they saw to the right the Via Appia climbing over the hills from Brundisium, and joining their own road at Capua, where they would rest for the night. Again they went on till the road dropped and then ceased altogether, for before them lay a dismal marsh of reeds, through which a canal had been cut. Julius took a barge, and he with his company sailed and were towed by mules through these pontine marshes. As night fell the gnats of the marshes came buzzing around them and stinging, and all through the dark the great frogs croaked continuously. Strong as he was, Paul sometimes fell into deep sadness. It came over him in these marshes. 
the malaria of the place may have infected his body and depressed his spirit luke as he walked by paul's side watching him with the love of a brother and the skilled eye of a physician saw this growing gloom and was troubled by it after they had landed from the barge at the north end of the canal through the marshes and were once more on the road paul and luke and the others saw on the way a band of men hurrying toward them the men were beginning to salute the party of travellers yes indeed it was a group of christians who had hurried out for forty-three miles along the via appia to meet paul at the appii forum a traveller's resting town it may well be that old friends of his were there aquila for instance and john mark who had parted with him in anger thirteen years before but was now his friend again what a change luke noticed in paul as they met these friends his stride was firm and strong again his eye lighted it was the miracle of the power of friendship and luke wrote it down that when paul saw them he thanked god and took courage between the town of the appii forum and the city of rome another group of friends met paul at the three shops where there were a general store a blacksmith's forge for shoeing any horse that might have cast a shoe on the stone way and a refreshment house at last the long white road crossed the shoulder of the alban mount right and left the road was lined with glittering marble towers and monuments the tombs of noble roman men and women but at that moment paul had no eyes for these on his right the great aqueduct gleamed in the light as it ran on its thousand arches from the latin hills across the plain his companions would tell paul that it was only finished ten years ago and would speak of the thousands of slaves who had toiled to build it yet they could not draw his look to the wonderful work paul was not captured even by the glory of the sabine hills that rose in the fresh green of spring away to the right and behind them the gigantic rampart of the apennines his eyes travelled down the way stretched in front of him for twelve miles straight and taut as a strong bowline for at the end crowning her seven hills with marble temple and imperial palace stood the capital of the world whose rule ranged from jerusalem to spain and from africa and across the alps and the forests of europe to the savage islands of britain paul saw rome years before this day he had written to his friends i must see rome for his far-seeing brain told him that to capture rome for his christ was to hold the key to the conquest of the whole world of his day and what his eye saw his heart dared he turned the stumbling block of imprisonment into the stepping stone of world conquest when he said i appeal to caesar and now when he came over the alban mount on the appian way his burning ambition was realized his body was chained but his mind flew along the road to rome aquila or mark or one of the others who had come out to meet him would point to the great palace of the caesars on the hill that was the heart of rome the palaces that augustus tiberius and caligula had built beyond the palaces and above the valley where the forum lay stood out the citadel of rome on the capitoline hill the travellers passed the tombs of the son of lars porcina of clusium and of a hundred other great romans and the shining temple of hercules then they went down the slope of the hill and crossed the sacred stream of almo down which the roman legend said the babies romulus and remus had floated in their wicker basket into the tiber to the foot of the hill on which they founded rome at last paul passed under the new arch of drusus and was beneath the shadow of the very wall of rome his footsteps rang on the stones under the arch of the capena gate he was in rome the multitudes of rome thronged the streets the crowds stood aside as julius led his band of prisoners up the slope of the celian hill to the camp of the foreign legion there was the clatter of arms the salute the words of explanation and paul was in the keeping of the praetor the prisoner of the emperor nero end of chapter thirty five